It's an absolute pleasure today to be given the opportunity to present to you my findings of my Nuffield report, Opportunities for Farmers to Grow Wealth in the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Before I go into detail about that, I would like to make a few acknowledgements. Firstly, I would like to thank my sponsor, the Thomas Henry Foundation. I would like to thank Mike, Poe, and the entire Nuffield team for their continued support. I would like to thank my family and friends and all those that supported me during my studies and travels. And lastly, I would like to thank my girlfriend, Fiona, who's been a great support to me over this past number of months to get to this point today. So what is the fourth industrial revolution? Well, it is the ongoing automation and digitalization of many of the industries within our economy. And it's also been described as the internet of things. And when you look at the auto sector, when you look at the energy sector, the retail sector, they're all going through major technological change, uh, not just through technology, but also the needs and wants of their customers. So how does this relate to agriculture? Well, the term agri-tech has been around for quite a while. However, its core aim remains the same, to increase yield, to increase efficiency and profitability, not just for farmers, but throughout the supply chain. And when you look at, in simple terms, it's described as the convergence of smart technology and agriculture. Some of the examples, the likes of artificial intelligence, hyperponics and drones, they have been around for a number of years, However, the potential application and use of the sector are really only beginning to dawn. So where did I travel to? I traveled to over 12 different countries, over 30 flights, almost 50 face-to-face -face interviews. And I deliberately picked countries that had innovation and entrepreneurship at the very heart of their economy. And the, what, the one that stood out the most in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship within their economy in general was China. But within agriculture, I would say the state of California, Denmark were the three countries that really are making the use of, of innovation within their agricultural sector. So who did I meet during my travels? Well, I met farmers, I met agri-tech startup entrepreneurs. I also met corporations, both within agriculture and outside of it. I also met academics and venture capitalists. And I also met many interesting people along the way uh, on train journeys and plane flights, etc. So what did I learn during my travels? Well, I learned that many agri-tech entrepreneurs had absolutely no background within farming or agriculture. And although they brought a skill set such as engineering and IT to, the, to their jobs and to their companies, it also led to some neg negatives, such as uh, practicality issues of agri-tech products, which they had developed, but also the sales and marketing to farmers uh, who are, at the end of the day, the end customers of their products. So I also learned that farmers had very little engagement within the agri-tech sector, and some didn't even understand what the term meant or what it stood for within their industry. I also learned from visiting some of the countries that there was a strong correlation between high farm subsidy support and a lack of innovation within their industry. I also learned that there were opportunities for the agri-tech development, but it still remains fairly high, especially within the livestock sector. It also became apparent that agri-corporations are now beginning to find it very difficult to innovate, uh, simply because they are too big and to uh, slow to react to the changing customer needs uh, of their farmers. And in fact, agri entrepreneurs, agri tech entrepreneurs and farmers themselves are actually becoming the innovators uh, throughout the world. I also learned that efficient collaboration through, through the open innovation model was the most successful, especially when farmer involvement was pretty high. So why should UK farmers be interested in agri-tech? Well, two things that farmers should understand at this moment in time, 50 to 70% of farm income currently is made up by farm subsidies. And when you couple that with the fact that sovereign UK debt is almost over 100% of GDP, you can see that in the next number of years, there's gonna be increasing strain, not just in taxpayers here in the UK, but also in the UK government. 
to continue to support farmers in the way that they might have liked in the past. I also would say that UK farms could now be leveraged as innovation hubs to really drive innovation from the, in Agritag up from the farm upwards and really creating new income streams uh, by either becoming investors within Agritag startups or else starting Agritag companies themselves. And just to quote the late Steve Jobs from Apple, innovation is the ability to see change rather than opportunity. So common reasons for farmer disengagement within agri-tag development. Well, the majority of farm subsidy policies currently discourages innovation, I believe. I also believe that tax allowances are geared to buying agri-tag products as opposed to developing and creating them. I also believe that encouraging open innovation and collaboration was not widespread within the industry. And that's not just a UK issue, it's an issue globally. Also, another issue globally, even within the developed world, is the infrastructure for internet and mobile coverage, especially across rural areas. And I think if, if people within the sector here in the UK want to make a success out of it, they really need to invest in, in this, technology, this infrastructure to make it work better. So to give you some idea of the investment in Agritech at the moment, well, it's currently worth about 14.3 billion to the UK economy and expected to reach 17 to 18 billion over the next number of years. It has also created almost 540,000 jobs. And what I learned from talking to venture capitalists who are the main investor in the agri-tech sector is that there is more money and more capital to invest than actual projects to invest it on. And the reason why venture capital funds are really interested in the sector is because they see the growth potential and the possibility of making an investment. And it was very interesting to learn that very few VCs had any background in agriculture or farming. And that, that's a huge risk for them to invest in an industry which they know very little about. And just to give you some idea, $2.6 billion globally has been invested in agri-tech projects uh, through venture capital funds up until August of 2020. And it's probably going to be slightly lower this year, but it's mainly due to the COVID crisis rather than any fundamental issue within the sector. So what are the two best collaboration models within Agritech that I've seen in my travels? Well, the first one was at the University of Illinois. And basically there was 120 corp agri corporations on the university campus, which worked collaboratively with academics, students, and dozens of agri-tech startups. And the economic impact of this has created almost 1,000 jobs in, say, 10 years off a of greenfield site. And it's a real uh, model for how open innovation can really work and work effectively. As regards innovation from the farm upward, I thought that Sweden and Denmark were two countries that really stood out in this regard. Uh, when you the Hamra farm in Sweden, which is owned by D. Laval, which makes milking machine uh, equipment, it was clear to see that they still see their, their, the Hamra farm um, as a, an area for an, using leveraging as an innovation hub, and they continue to use that uh, to really uh, improve their products uh, before they launch them onto the market to, to farmers. So it was a great example. This is what I call the upward farm innovation model. And I came up with this myself during my travels and it's some more detail in my Nuffield report, but it basically places the farmer at the very center of the agri-tech industry here in the UK. And it mentions all the stakeholders that's involved within the sector, but there's two new ones that I believe are missing currently. One is the use of a UK academic business school I believe that they could bring a lot to the industry as regards commercializing and monetizing a lot of the research that has already been done within the sector. And I also believe there's an opportunity for a farmer-backed venture capital fund, especially if we can take the, attribute, the positive attributes from the cooperative model, which has been very successful here in Northern Ireland. And really the aim of this is to really maximize the return on investment for everyone within the sector. 
And I know the UK government has been very good at investing in the sector with almost over 100 million uh, being put in over this past number of years. So what are the key conclusions? Well, I believe that farmer involvement is central to the agri-tech development here in the UK. I also believe that government incentives are needed to drive innovation and collaboration, especially from the farm level upwards. I also believe that there needs to be better access for farmers to purpose-built agri-tech facilities in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And currently, that was an issue that came up from talking to both farmers and agri-tech companies was the access to these facilities. They have to travel to England to be able to, to get access to that. So I think it, it's been able to build that out across the rest of the UK. I also believe that there's many opportunities for new income streams for farmers, especially through if the government can develop new agri-tech initiatives uh, to allow that to happen. So what are the five pillars for change? Well, I believe that the UK subsidy policy should include an agri-tech element in it. It really is a platform for innovation for farmers and to develop agri-tech from the farm upwards. I believe there needs to be more innovation tax incentives for farmers to really encourage agri-tech entrepreneurship at, at farm level. I also believe that there needs to be better access to research and development for farmers, especially for prototype development and trying to iron out any issues that products may have. There needs to be better effective collaboration across the agri-tech ecosystem, really to encourage a much more open innovation model within the sector. And I believe that there is an opportunity and a need for a UK farmer funded venture capital fund. And the idea of that is to keep money within the sector and also to give farmers the opportunity both to invest within the sector and also to gain new income streams. And finally, I'd just like to thank uh, Nuffield again for the changes that it has made in my life, that Nuffield has made in my life and my business. And it has certainly been a great experience. And I would like to thank everyone that I met throughout my travels and also my 2018 uh, year group. Thank you.